Hello and Jin Dobre, ladies and gentlemen. Um, like she um, already told, I'm Sarah Bluma. I'm um, working as a social worker um, with two other social workers um, and three primary schools and one secondary school. This is my first lecture in English, so please don't be mad if I say something wrong. In my opinion, systemic conflict management is a good way to deal with cyberbullying. Therefore, I want to uh, illustrate a course of action for schools by using a representative case of cyberbullying after sexting. If you have got any questions, please feel free to approach me after my talk or later that day. You also, also got the chance to look into the new ClickSafe and Conflict Culture material on cyberbullying. It's like, just like that one. Um, and everything is um, explained there in detail. At first, I want to explain the word sexting. As you can read, sexting means communication about sexual topics via mobile messaging, especially by sending photos or videos containing explicit content. I think a lot of teachers, social workers, or other pedagogues that work in schools are familiar with cases of cyberbullying like this one. Maybe some of you already had one in school. Um, could you please put your hand up uh, when you say we already had a case of cyberbullying in our school? Okay, yeah. Um, a girl, age 13, let's name her Amy, comes to our office in school. She looks sad and desperate, and she tells us that she was in love with that guy named Ben. She had never been so in love and therefore, she filmed herself naked, as her boyfriend asked her to. She then sent him the video, although she didn't have a good feeling about the whole thing. But she really don't want to lose him. She's ashamed of having sent the video to Ben. After breaking up with Ben some months later, he threatened her with sending the video to everyone at school. Everybody should see, he said, that she's a bitch. One day earlier, before Amy came to our office, Ben had sent the video to a lot of students of Amy's and Ben's class, as her best friend Linda told her. So a lot of students have the video on their mobile phones now, and they start whispering when Amy approaches them. Amy feels helpless and alone. She's afraid of what is happening right now. Now, what to do? the responsible persons at school got the chance to build frame conditions that support quick and qualitative actions against cyberbullying. So the first step is to build a systemic conflict management team that develops procedural methods and ways that are obligatory for everyone at school. Conflict manager at our school is our social worker team, so we're doing conflict management nearly every day. And I can tell you there are a lot of cases like that. The conflict manager is responsible for coordinating the conflict handling process, providing advice to the team, organizing team meetings, and conducting the intervention. It's also very important to find the right way for saving data like videos, pictures, or messages by considering the law. So, in a conflict management team, you got on one hand the head teacher and the class teacher. You got the pedagogues, for example, social workers and other pedagogues. And you also have got the conflict manager. Conflict manager might be the class teacher, the social worker, or other pedagogues. And you've got um, conflict assistants, for example, teachers or volunteers um, who received special training or other pedagogues. When you look at the picture, um, you see that there are two intrapersonal conflicts. There was one intrapersonal conflict in Amy, because she was sending on the pictures and she's got a big problem now. And there is an intrapersonal conflict in Ben, because she wants um, the video um, from Amy and she's behaving like that. You also get a interpersonal conflict between Amy and Ben because um, yeah they've got the conflict. You also got an institutional conflict between Ben and the head teacher 
and the class teacher because um, Ben breaks the rules of the school. There is also a systemic conflict between um, Ben and Amy's class because they're behaving against um, the norms and values. Now to the important thing, the course of action for schools. I just um, explain everything in detail. First point of contact, in initial care, positioning and data protection. Talk with Amy about her feelings and about what happened when she comes to you. Examine if there is an urgent risk for her life, for example, suicide, and show her that you are a place of refuge for her. That's very, very important. Find out the circumstances. For example, if Ben committed a crime, and document them. Document means providing evidence for the conflict, like videos, pictures, and messages or chats have to be saved. Ask Amy if you got the permission to support her and explain the different steps to her. Ask if her parents already know what happened or, sh or how her parents would react if they get to know what she has done. Also examine if there is any risk. When Amy gives the mandate, that means she agrees to accept our support in the conflict and gives the permission to talk with her parents and the conflict management team, you can go on. She wants to talk with her parents first, that's very, very good. And if she should encounter any problems, she would approach the social worker. On the same evening, the head teacher or the class teacher will call her parents, inform them and invite them to school. The next step is team building, conflict diagnostics and development of action plan. After informing and talking with the head teacher the day before, it's important to organize a conflict management team meeting at the next morning. Inform the team about the case and the circumstances. Do a prelim preliminary assessment of the case and clarify the different roles and assignments with the team. There are a lot of different roles. For example, advisor, conflict assistant, conflict manager or modulator. Develop and organize the action plan. Now to the crisis intervention. It's important to determine the goals of the crisis intervention. Primary aim is the de-escalation on an interpersonal and systemic level. That means to support and empower Amy in order to avoid the self-destructive behavior or violence against Ben. Oblige Ben in his assistance to stop attacking Amy. Get control over the, the situation. Above all, stop the further spread of the video to avoid criminal acts. Strengthen the pro-social values and norms in Amy and Ben's classes. The class, like every class is in the case like that, got the excuse. We are allowed to behave like that, to gossip about Amy, because she's a bitch and it's her own fault, because she was sending the video. So it's very, very important to confront the classes with their excuses. Clarify open questions by doing interviews with observers and do confrontational interviews, for example with Ben. That means the head teacher speaks with Ben and does the, does the accusation. Then the conflict manager helps Ben to write down his point of view. Inform and counsel Amy's parents. Inform the other members at the systemic conflict management team meeting so that they know how the things go on. Implementation of action plan. The most important aspects are offer social individual casework and personal coaching to Amy. Inform and counsel Amy's parents. Also important is the consultation of Ben and his parents. Restriction of the use of smartphones during school activity. 
And besides, it's very, very important that Ben makes a declaration of commitment to re renounce violence with his teacher or with a head teacher. Offer assistance and personal coaching and assisted school obedience to Ben. It's important to do a systemic short-term intervention in Amy's and Ben's classes, like Stephanie Fechner already explained yesterday. That means to tell two stories close to what happened to Amy to increase empathy and compassion. And to offer a declaration of commitment to the classes. For example, one point is to promise to delete and not sending videos, pictures and texts that are hurtful for other persons. Furthermore, the class does a secret election and elects six human rights observers. The elected human rights observers get the permission to report to the conflict manager and to the teacher when they see that somebody breaks a human rights and doesn't adhere to the declaration of commitment. Dialogues with both classes concerning norms and risk are also important. Offer a social award for the adherence of the declaration of commitment. And monitor also, um, monitor adherence to declaration of commitment as soon as possible. At that point, it's very important to work close with the um, class teacher. Now to the conflict resolution. Speak with the elected human rights observers and monitor adherence to the declaration of commitment in class at the beginning weekly. Support Amy with Amy uh, with social individual casework and personal coaching. Also support Ben with personal coaching. Ben also gets the offer to compensate for his behavior. That means he writes down with the help of the social worker two letters in which he apologizes for his behavior and reads one of them with the support of the social worker and to Amy in front of her class and the other one to his teacher in front of his class. Furthermore, he does community service in school. For example, he works with a caretaker of the school. Follow-up care and end of the conflict. Speak with the elected human rights observers and monitor, like you already heard, adherence to the declarations. You also could invite the prevention team of the police. And now that's a point that's very, very, very important. Give appreciation to Ben and the classes if they adhere to their declarations. Develop code of behavior for social networks with the classes. And inform the conflict management team about the follow-up care. And keep in contact with Amy for the rest of the school year. At the end, I've got a quote um, from Amy. She said, you told me that we would manage this together. You've gone with me through it all. It made me strong. Thank you. And with the words of Amy, I want to encourage each one of you because you have got a good impact of ch for children and for teenagers. So you do a good job and go on with it. Thank you.